here at Cleary Cattle Ranch in Peterborough County. I am with the trio that helps you bring food to your family. We've got Chris Cleary, Director of Operations at Cleary Cattle Ranch. I've got George Medell, owner and operator and butcher, well known through Peterborough, of Primal Cuts on Lansdowne Street in Peterborough. I'm Chef Connie Powers from Farm to Fork. We're gonna show you how to bring food to your table. Hey everybody, welcome to our series, Farm to Fork. I'm Chef Connie Powers and you're watching Rogers TV, Farm to Fork. Today we're gonna to take you through the steps of the producer, the butcher, and the chef and how they help you to bring things to your table. We're here with George Medill of Primal Cuts butcher shop in, on Lansdowne Street in Peterborough. He's going to show us how to cut this beautiful, this beautiful piece of beef. It is a strip loin. You know, I've heard so many times in chef school that y your cut of meat is only as good as what your butcher can do to it. Let's see what you've got to say about this. Well, Connie, thanks again for having me on the, on the program. Um, so we have, a, we have a strip loin here. It's, it's kind of the middle section of your loin. You know, it's cut between the rib and right before the hip. So we've got, um, it's been boned out completely, right? So the spine's been taken out, the feather bones have been taken out, it's been nicely manicured and it's ready to cut into steaks. Uh, we've got two different sections of the strip loin. This right here. It's beautiful, the marbling. The mar like it's, and, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is Cleary Cattle. That's where we're cattle. cooking today, Cleary yeah. Cattle Ranch. So this is their cattle and is this dry aged? This has been dry aged, yes. We've got 75 days dry age on this Oh, that's line. beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so you were telling me earlier that you cut uh, fat side up or you cut meat side up? I cut meat side up. Okay. So for the, for the reason that because there is some, there is some uh, connective tissue on the top, this is called a back strap. If you try to cut through that, you're going to squish the steak. Yes, and you're right? going to get an uneven cut. So if that's the last thing that you cut through, you're gonna have a really nice cut. So we'll, we'll do a little example of that. Right okay. Now. Yeah. So you're going to cut as the butcher who would have this on your, on your board, you're, uh, are you cutting into what would be a retail? Absolutely, cut? yeah, yeah. So we always make sure that your face is nice and, and straight. Right? Okay. And then we're gonna like, what kind of, well, how thick do you wanna cut your steak today? Usually, well, let, like, let's we, make it- uh, We usually do an inch and a quarter. An right? inch and a quarter. So right? this, this would be, a nice barbecue. It's a perfect barbecue thickness. It's, it's good for any any range of skill level as well. That's right? good to know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slice through. Now, at your store, if at your butcher shop, if we went there and we could just select this piece of meat and ask you to cut it, you would cut, you'd cut it in store. So what we would have is we would have this, we would have this um, thickness cut already in this in the counter as a like our, our standard as a ready to, to yeah. buy ready so to go in, if you get into something that you want a little bit thicker a little bit thinner um then that's something that can be custom done for you so okay. you'll have a whole piece in the counter plus you'll have retail steaks cut already so we could have this thinner if, if it's like an absolutely. you know a family who's trying to be a little bit more economical with it they could cut it a little bit thinner absolutely so you're trimming off some fat this we is the back strap this is full like full um connective tissue you cannot bite through this you can't no, no and no. and it's not really much that, that's right and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of fat here we're just going to take a little bit off so in your store you sell beef tallow which is a, a delicious product to use in a lot of dishes would we use pieces like that to make the tallow where do you get that from Ta tallow is rendered beef fat mm -hmm. yeah so all of these things go into it okay anything that's like even that's really gelatinous is what you want for your stocks is the same like it all gets sifted out at the top like when you when everything solidifies at the top the same thing is when you're doing rendered fat you just scoop yeah. off the top you scoop off whatever gets rendered out that doesn't that, do, that doesn't render down completely, okay. gets, gets cleaned up. And you stuff. sell that in the shop. Like, yeah, yeah. You could yeah. go in at any time Anytime. and get that. Yeah, we do the same thing with pork lard, duck fat. Um, so you're cooking with your essential fats. If, so if you, you carry uh, clearing cattle yeah. at Primal Cuts, yeah. but you also have chicken, fish. I've been there. It's an amazing yeah, butcher we, shop. Yeah, a pretty good spread. You know, we got a little bit of everything. Yeah. You carry pork. Yeah, we carry pork. And some and some local ready-made products. There's eggs. I saw some yeah, bacon. Yeah, yeah. Great. eggs, bacon, everything. Most of my stuff is local Ontario, um, but I haven't, you know, 
just set myself just to that so that we can enjoy stuff around the world as well. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah. So we're going to be putting these on the grill and Chris uh, Cleary is somewhere in the back, so he's vacated. We're gonna come back. Uh, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be, we'll be right back. back you're watching farm to fork with chef connie powers do you usually see me doing all the cooking but today i've got chris cleary from C uh, cleary cattle ranch thanks for being here today thanks for thanks, hosting thanks us Thanks for having me connie it's a pleasure to be here with you well it, we're in their beautiful kitchen and we are cooking cleary meat now usually you would see me do this today we're going to let chris chris has a culinary background he's not just the rancher he's also the chef we're going to let chris show us how to take these beautiful strip loins that were cut by george of uh, primal cuts and we're going to do some really fun things with it let's see so thanks connie uh, you know obviously we've got uh, some of our, our strip loin here you can see we have great marbling throughout the, the meat. It's beautiful. I'm going to show you something that I really like doing, and it's one of the more simpler kind of marinades, but extreme flavor. So uh, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, in which I'll put down onto the plate. Um, it's important that you don't rust the steak and the balsamic for more than five minutes. Right. Um, during the first five minutes, it's actually going to... Uh, loosen up some of the meat and then some of that sweetness from the balsamic is going to absorb into it But after that five minutes yeah after the five minutes because it is vinegar it will start to to cook it But you know, this is really good. I mean, we've got a super tender cut with the strip loin here But even with those tougher cuts that you, you use the balsamic will break down the tendons in the meat and, and make it much more Softer for eating. So tell us about this meat. This is black Angus. Yeah, so we uh, this is a registered uh, uh, Black Angus. Um, so in Canada, it's registered. Um, we have a, a, a calf cow program going, so we're actually breeding our own uh, our own registered Black Angus. Um, we are our high end AAA right now. Uh, great finishing feed pro program. You can see all the marbling throughout the meat. Strip loins, phenomenal, phenomenal. One of my favorite steaks. To yeah, cook. same. Um, but there was something interesting you were telling me about the connection with George uh, about the the finishing. Yeah. So uh, with George, you know. Uh, obviously him being my butcher and him having, you know, 11 years experience in Peterborough and, and being a master butcher, we worked on a finishing feed program together. So, you know, we do uh, rotational grazing with our animals, which is regenerative for our, our soil and, and our feed. Um, so we graze our animals. Then we have a, a finishing feed program that we put them on, uh, which brings you all that beautiful marbling and fat throughout the state. And George so is part of that process. George, which George you and I work together. Not only is George out on the farm, you know, working and seeing what we're doing with the animals and the love and the pride that we take. But the interesting thing is, is that George is here, but then I'll go down to the butcher shop and work with him as well to make sure that we're getting the final product, which is right here. And I mean, obviously, I mean, look at look at the beautiful marbling throughout that. Company. Yeah, that's... It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, even to touch, it's so soft, right? So mm -hmm. we're, we're really happy with our finishing feed program. Um, things are working out well. It's exciting. I'm I, excited I can see... to cook this with you. Well, today. let's see really that. Yeah. We, we put the balsamic. Yeah. Uh, now you're going to season it. Yeah. So for me, um, really important. I want to taste the meat. I don't want to taste all the seasonings and, you know, you get somewhere and some people put a lot of spices on and that's great. But for us, I mean, because we pride ourselves on the natural flavor, I want to be able to taste that. I want to be able to taste my farm. I want to be able to taste the, the grass, the air, the that's smell, a really, the textures. That's a really good point. And only so the rancher important. would know that. Yeah, and it's, right? But as the chef, I will definitely add a little bit of salt and pepper. I mean, salt's key to anything. So, um, and again, you know, 
I'm not big on marinating steaks for more than five minutes. Some people will marinate. And this, you said, has sat out at room temperature. This has been out since I'm, I got here. Yeah, I'm, I'm like about two and a half to three hours. I think it's important that when you're grilling or you're searing your steak, which we'll be searing today, I think it's important that the, the meat is at room temperature, loosens everything up. You're going to get a better cook on it. You're going to get the flavors accentuated out of it. So... All right, so we could do this at a cast iron pan in the kitchen, yeah, middle of winter, uh, but today we're going to put it on a cast iron flat yeah, on your I've grill. Yeah, I've actually got a flat top, a uh, cast iron flat that's sitting on top of my uh, my grill, okay. which is my preference because I like to get that nice sear all the way across the, the steak. So. Okay, and then will we finish them inside? Yeah, we'll finish them. Well, actually, we're going to finish them right on the right on the flat top today and then we'll bring them in and we're going to cut them okay so we're going to take these steaks outside and we're going to go over to the grill come with us we're getting ready to sear off some of our strip loin steaks i got my cast iron out going to drop some oil down on there it's nice and hot you can see it smoking we'll come off with our steaks Once I get my steak down, I typically won't touch it here, given the heat, and we're uh, we're sitting a little over 500 degrees. Uh, we're about a minute and a half per side to hit a medium rare. Okay, I'm just gonna close the lid. Give it one blast of heat here over the next couple minutes. So I'm gonna pull those off now. We can go in, Tom. Okay, we're back from the grill, and we've got Chef Chris, who is the uh, operator and cattle rancher here, but he's also the chef. So he has taken the, the steaks out, put them on the grill. He's bringing them back in. He's going to show us how to plate them, and let me tell you, it smells great. So what are you going to do? Well, Connie, super excited. You know, we're going to take our uh, balsamic marinated steak. We had a little bit of simple salt and pepper. So, on let, yeah, let's it. just go back to that. So we marinated with a little balsamic yep. and salt and pepper. That yeah, was it. very simple. I, I try and tend to let the meat speak for itself. We're really proud of what we raise around here, and we think there's a lot of robust flavors that will come out naturally with the accentuation of salt. So what I've got here, I've got my, my uh, strip loin. You want to cut, obviously, against the grain, which is going to be this way, and you'll see it in the steak. So we're going to fan this out and do a very simple plating presentation, which can elevate, you know, the home cook and have some fun with it. So. Okay, so what would be the internal temperature? I know you didn't test because you're, you're Yeah, so we're, we're, we're probably on this one. We're about 135. I'm looking for so a medium rare. medium rare. Yeah, okay. medium rare, right? So we're going to cut it on the bias. It's always important, I think, to cut a little bit on an angle. Um you know, loosens up those grains and the steak and the fat. And, so this you know. came off the grill. We let it sit here on the board for a, a good five minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think it's so important, Connie, to let your meat rest. You know, it gives, it gives the steak the opportunity for the flavors to come back in towards the center. Um, you know, it allows for juiciness. If you cut it right away, you're not going to be where you want to be. Okay. So I cut my steak on the bias like so, very simply. Slide the ice knife down through the middle, pick it up, I'll bring it over, and then I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to start to fan it out as I pull the knife out. So very easily here, and you can see, we've got a pretty nice cook on that for a, a mid-rare. So Do you we'll think, open it up. Is it? Would you consider this to be a single serving? Uh, yeah, I would say, well, for me, I'm a big guy. Connie, maybe if we were sitting down together, we might split one. This is about a 12-ounce steak, which is okay. pretty standard when you're going out to restaurants. So um, I put the steak down. Then what I like to do, I've got uh, the local garlic and scape butter that Connie has put together for us. Yeah, so, so this is a compound butter. We've, we've done a show on this before. You just take butter. Uh, scapes that have uh, been taken off but have been harvested of the garlic a little bit of parsley and a little bit of fresh garlic you blend that you've got this compound butter it can be used in a lot of things so today we're going to put it on this strip loin yeah and who who doesn't like butter i mean that's going to add a lot of flavor to an already very flavorful steak 
So I've got that down, and I like to cut it when I'm serving it to people, even at home, you know. I just yeah. think it makes it easier. You don't necessarily need that knife. You've cut it for them. Then I'm going to come across with um, some fingerling potatoes. The fingerling potatoes we did uh, with some bacon fat that we saved when we actually cooked bacon from uh, breakfast this morning. Um, but these are fingerling potatoes cooked in bacon fat. I see some rosemary yeah, in there. some rosemary, some sea salt. Now, did you uh, boil the potatoes before? Did you pre-cook them? I did. I, I gave them a little bit of a blanch just to speed things up in the pan. And the great thing about that is you can blanch your potatoes the night before, hold them in the fridge until your guests are coming over, and then it's very simple just to fry them up in the pan. Sure. As right. a home cook, this could even be a yeah. leftover potato. Um, and then one of the dishes we're really excited about here is, you know, we've got some Ontario apples that are in season. Uh, we've got some uh, red cabbage, some sweet onions, and I'm just going to throw that on there so what we did is we uh we poached the the cabbage and the apples for a couple minutes mm -hmm. uh, then we went to the oven with the onions a little dijon mustard you know um really colorful on the i plate. think we added some uh, balsamic glaze yeah, yeah, to this some, some reduction to connie so you've got your apples in there ontario you know local obviously you brought those in for us today i was very excited to to see the quality of them coming out of the farms uh you know in the peterborough area um, and then very simple garnish, what I did, and, you know, this can be fun. And the microgreens, there's a huge health benefit to microgreens there's right a, now. Yes, you know, there is. Um, you can get a lot of nutrients out of something very simple. And I mean, look at, these are very colorful. You can find them in the grocery store, but, you know, even better, you can find them at the local farmer's market. They really, you know, they make that plate look pretty. And, so. and these came from Otonabee, didn't they? Yeah, these are, this is from Otonabee Microgreens, which is uh, very close to our farm. I'm a huge supporter of Max. So, it um, just adds a nice garnish. It adds know, nutritional you can add a little value. bit of color. And then something else that's really fun, Connie, and we were talking about it today, is you get yourself a, a, an onion scallion cutter. Yes, um, Which I you can find that. online. You know, there, it's, it's made for for fine julienne of uh, green onions, but I've always loved this and it's an edible garnish. Anything that goes on my plate, I like to eat. So I wanna make sure that it's edible, but you bring these in, you know, we can add some height to the plate, like so. Here we have the stirrup sirloin that uh, Chris has plated. So we've got, but a 12 ounce steak? 12, 12 ounce steak. Uh, we've got some fingerling potatoes that were done uh, in bacon fat with some rosemary, sea salt, and pepper. Uh, and then, you know, obviously uh, in season, the Ontario apples and some of our red cabbage. Yeah, I, this this is interesting. This this Ontario apples and red cabbage. That's yeah, an interesting it's very uh, addition. Full fall dish and utilizing what we have locally available to us right now. Um, so we did that with a little bit of honey and balsamic. Uh, and then obviously on top of our, our strip point is the garlic scape butter, which I'm really excited to try that, Connie. Like I had a little taste of it earlier. It's, 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 it's delicious. I really think it'll highlight the steak. Yeah, we're going to put the uh, recipe up at the end. You're also going to put the link on uh, to where to get this uh, scallion Shaper scallion yeah, stripper. Yeah, you can find it on Amazon. You know, it's a it's a scallion cutter or green onion cutter. You yeah, and that. it made a simple garnish. This is something you could make at home. This this has all the components of delicious food, but also something that can be created just with a little creativity, a little imagination. Chris, we want to thank you for taking us well, into thanks, your thanks, home. Thanks, Connie. Thanks for having me. It's great to work with you. A pleasure to be here with you today well, too. Thank you. It was fun, but now we're going to eat this. Exciting. Thanks. We'll, we'll, we'll take you down. We want to show you our no goats, promise. our chickens, okay. everything there. So, Maddie, Mo, do you want you guys want to go down to the lower barn and just kind of give them the breakdown of the animals that we have there? My dog. Good. Good morning. It was Monique Cleary, and she is the owner of the farm. She's going to take us through for a little tour. We've got Matt here. He does everything around here. <laughs> so, down here we have our meat birds, which we're raising. We have um, mini goats. Okay. And um, we have layers as well. Yeah. Okay, so the yep. purpose of them on a cattle ranch, what, what's the purpose of the meat hens? You're selling them? Yes. On, on the premises or at a market? At a market, yeah. And, and the laying is for your own home? Yeah, for... It, it's for, yeah. for personal yeah. as well. Yeah. And, the and the goats are just for fun? Yeah, they're, for, fun. they're like pretty much a petting zoo for our grandkids. Of course. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is our larger goat. He's a Nubian. He's very gentle. Oh, very, very friendly. 
And this is our little guy, Petrie. Now he's a fainter, silky. Oh, yes. Yes. So he faints quite a bit. Oh. Yes. Actually, I'm gonna close this door. It's actually a little cool in here. So we're bringing out Mama and the babies. Come on out, Mama. Come on. Oh, yeah, they're, they're still, yeah. Yeah. So it's like corn or mommy's milk. <laughs> you don't use any of the milk. Not, not at the moment. Uh, we're just getting into the breeding process, yeah. so, yeah. Oh, these are adorable. And this is petting zoo fun. Print, fun yep, exactly. pretty much, yep, for the grandkids. Why not use it? Yeah. Yeah. Grandkids love it. The four in here, they're all siblings. They get out to pasture, yes. Uh, but it's cooler today. I keep them inside. But these won't go to meat, will they? No, God no. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. Oh, they love it. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Oh, jumping goats. Mm. At some point, this was this was horses. Oh yeah. And cattle. Yeah. So up in the upper barn were the birthing stalls. Yes. And then the horses were down here. <laughs> oh. So this is Mama, and she was a rescue horse. Okay. Uh, and that's her baby. Oh. Yeah. So we have Blissy and Gracie. Go to teeth again? Oh yeah. Give me those teeth. <laughs> Give me those teeth. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that this space is being used to uh, foster a little bit of farm knowledge for your grandchildren, a little bit of uh, fun. And, but it's not for meat. It's not for profit. No. It's not for consumption. No. It's because you have space and you brought in rescues. And, and, and we have a passion. We have a passion yep. to do it. Even in the winter. That's, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Our goal is just to give them the best life possible. Yep. And yeah. you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, it's a little bit of therapy for us too, yeah. right? Well, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 I like it.